Practical Theorem 2. I'm going to show you some examples and then we can tick that off once we have done it. So here is an example of um, a quadrilateral inside a circle. I'm going to drag the points around so you can see there's point C and it's been uh, moving around the top and then we can also move these points around here. So all of the points of this quadrilateral except for that one are on the circumference. Now if I show you the angles you may spot a pattern or you might already know the pattern just by the name that we looked at a few seconds ago. What do you realize is the relationship between the green angle and the pink angle here? So for example, if I just change it here, what do you notice about the numbers? If I put it here, what happens if I move this all the way up to, for example, 250? So what you may have noticed is the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, no matter what I do with this, wherever I move it around. I can even make it cross over. So it kind of looks like a bow tie. This kind of looks like an arrowhead. And then this, I'm not sure what this looks like, but again, you have to be able to spot these as well. So I'm gonna come back to these examples. Um, what you may also have noticed here is if I make this 180 degrees, this actually is the theorem that we just looked at, the first theorem. So technically, the first theorem I showed you, angles in a semicircle, happens to be a special case of this theorem. But at GCSE level, we consider that a separate theorem just because it comes up so frequently. Okay, so let's just do a couple of important points about this. The first point is the name of the theorem. So we we, sum, we don't have to say uh, this whole long sentence describing it. We just say the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, and that is enough to get you a mark in an exam. So for example, let's say this green angle was just labeled X and it said find X and give a reason. You would say angle X is 108 because angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So there's spe again specific properties here that we've met and those properties are the fact that this point at the bottom has to touch the origin. If it's not going through the center of the circle, then this, tr this rule no longer applies. So again, just be, keep an eye out for that. If you see a shape like this outlined and you're asked to work out the, uh, this the blue angle in this case, because that angle is not from the center, you cannot work this out without other information. And vice versa, the angle at the top has to be touching the circumference. It cannot just be anywhere through the middle of the uh, circle, just like this. So um, there's two specific properties that have to be true. And they are that this has to be at the circumference um, and this has to be at the center. Now let's prove where this theorem comes from. You're gonna be expected to be able to do this um, from scratch in an exam. So follow along and then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you to test yourself immediately by doing the proof without looking. Um, it's just for your own uh, reflection of what you can remember. And then later on in the year, we'll, we'll do some uh, tests or something just to see how you're doing. So I'll go through it with you. Uh, first of all, just like before I said, you have your radii and isosceles triangles are going to be your friends to prove all of these things true. So the first thing you may notice that's missing here is we can put a radii in there. Uh, in this case, uh, technically it's a diameter, but it's actually two radii that are coming from the, uh, the origin to C. And then there's a line extended down there. You'll see the reason for that line in a second. So let's just label the... Um, the radii. So those lines there are all the same length. I'm not going to label the one on the bottom here because we don't need to yet. So we can say if we call this angle X and call this angle Y, that means we can also call this angle down here Y and that angle down there um, X. So 
That means that this angle in the middle, so AOC, so this specific one, is going to be 180 take away the two um, other angles in that triangle. But we can also say that this angle here has to be 2x. Because if we focus on just this bit of the uh, shape, it's just a straight line. And you can see if that angle there is 180 minus 2x, well, to make it equal 180, I have to add 2x. So we can call that 2x. And we can actually do the same thing with the other triangle. We can say, well, this is y. Well, then that must mean that this angle here is going to be 180 minus 2y. Now, because of angles on a straight line, we can say that this angle there is going to be 180 minus 2y plus, well, that has to be 2y. Um, and that is actually going to lead us to our proof because that's telling us that AOB is 2x plus 2y. So this is this angle here. This is 2x plus 2y. But we know that this angle here is x plus y. So that angle there is twice as big um, the angle at the center is twice as big as the angle at the circumference. Um, and you can show that by just factorizing this out and then writing this. So again, test yourself on trying to reproduce that right now by pausing the video. And I'll give you, don't pause it yet. Let me just get that screen up. And then you should uh, have a go at a few questions. Okay, so this is what a question might look like. Prove that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. You're given a blank diagram. Have a go, pause the video now. Okay, now I'm gonna go through the example here. So just for your reference, if you're given a diagram like this, you're, it's completely fine to use the diagram as, a, as, uh, as part of your proof. It's not just the writing that's important. So you would just draw out your own uh, shape. You can then draw a radii and say, um, we'll call that X, call that Y, and then go on and then basically reproduce the um, the proof that we have, uh, which in this case is going to look like this. Okay, let's do some practice questions um, on the screen for this topic. Right, so question one. Here's your diagram. Um, find the value of x. Pause the video, have a go. You can use a calculator for this topic if you need to, but I don't think you need to for this, this specific question. So what's the answer? Okay, so I'm going to show you the answer now. So uh, because you have uh, an angle at the center and an angle at the circumference, uh, this is going to be half of 1, 2, 4. So you can do 1, 2, 4 divided by 2. So angle X, you should have got 62 degrees. Here's question 2. Pause the video as soon as you see it and then work out uh, angle Y. Okay, so we have... I'm going to go through it with you now. So we know a few things about this. First of all, we have an angle at the center here. So that is going to be uh, 55. Uh, that's going to be twice 55, so it's 110. We also know that these two are radii. And because they're radii, that is also going to be equal to y. Or in other words, 2y plus 180. Uh, sorry, 2y plus 110 is equal to 180 because it's an isosceles. Uh, and then we do 180 minus 110 uh, divided by two and we get your answer. Hopefully you got 35 degrees for that. And here's your final question, question Z. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the answer, but before I do, I need to stress to you that it's very important that you remember that although most of the time when you get angle at the center and angle at the circumference, you end up with this type of shape. 
And some revision guides or even some teachers in other schools might say, look out for an arrowhead. That's actually a little bit risky because if I were to move those two points up, just like I did in the diagrams in the interactive, you end up with a shape like this, which does not look like an arrowhead, but actually this is angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So you need to be able to recognize something like this. Sometimes it catches me out too, because you don't come across it very often and you just have to be able to spot it. So the first thing you might do here um, is actually very straight, straightforward though, um, if, you, if you do remember it, is you know that this angle Z is, um, is going to be half of this angle here. So the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we can call this 2z. Uh, you may have a slightly different method, but this is how I, I'm going to do this. So if I know that for the uh, angles around the center, 360 is equal to 160 plus 2z. Rearrange and solve. So 360, take away 160, divided by 2. Now that gives me z is equal to 100 degrees. Uh, let's see if we are correct. We are correct. So that is um, angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Right, so um, watch the next video for the next proof on circle theorems.